All right. Hey guys. So if you sit through this tutorial, you will be able to create a material, something like this in Keyshot using the material graph. We have some different stuff going on here. We have uh, these lines that we will create with the bump map. Then we have some different roughness going on inside here and outside here. And we have some uh, different small bumps as well on the lines and inside on the base surface. So let's dig into it. First step is to uh, create this tileable pattern and we will use Photoshop for that. So let's go into Photoshop, create a new document at 1000 times 1000 pixels. Um, and what we'll do first is to change the background to white and we will use this rectangle tool to create our rectangle. This is our base element of the pattern. And I hold down shift while I drag to get it a square. Then I'll change the color to black and add in some uh, rounding of the corners. Then I hit command T to rotate it and hold down shift to lock it at 45 degrees. And then I'll move it and snap it to the center of the document. Oops, yes, that's okay. From here, we want to uh, copy this element so the panel becomes tileable. And uh, I am by no means a pattern master, but I know this simple trick for simple patterns contain of just one single element. So what I'll do is to uh, hit Command J to copy the uh, layer and go to Filter, Other, Offset and just convert it to a smart object. What this uh, filter does is to uh, take the layer and shift it horizontally and vertically by the amount of pixels that you type in. And because our docu document is uh, 1000 pixels wide, we can type in 500 here and in the vertical as well, and it gives us a tileable pattern. Um, so I think that the uh, the border here is too wide compared to our reference image. So before accepting this, I am going to delete this, make the base element a bit bigger like this, copy it again, go back into offset, type 500 horizontally and vertically and hit OK. Then I will merge the two layers together, select them both and hit Command E. And to test if this is actually tileable, we can go into uh, Offset once more and drag it and see that we have a nice tiling edge here and here as well, so it looks good. All right, so save that out, put it on desktop as a PNG and call it pattern. All right, all right. And then I also want to save out a uh, version that is blurred for our bump map so we get some uh, nice soft edges on the blur on the bump map. So go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and add a tad of softness. I'll go for 10 pixels here. Hit OK, File, Save As, and put it on the desktop again. Uh, let's see, Pattern, Bump. All right, all right. And then let's jump into Keyshot. Our work in Photoshop is done. Here in Keyshot, I have the Material Ball scene open, and I have just uh, opened up the Material Graph for the material and changed it to a paint color or paint material with a black color. First step to create this material that we are trying to replicate 
is to uh, drag in our maps that we just created in Photoshop. And you can do this uh, by selecting them on the desktop and just drag them into your graph. All right. Let's work on the bump first, the main bump. So take this pattern bump texture map and drag into the bump. And look at that. I'll adjust the scale to something smaller. Like this, and I don't know why this happens. Never mind. And it looks good. So maybe we can bump up the bump height a bit, but in general, I try to stay below one. But sometimes it works fine to go above. I think uh, 0 0.4, 1.4 is looking good. Okay. So let's have a look at our reference material again. We can see that the color of these lines are darker than the uh, the squares. So to do that, we take this uh, pattern without the blur and put it into the color. So now we have like a black and white pattern, but that's not exactly what we're after. To control the color I am going to add in a uh, add in a color gradient texture and we can take this texture map and put in as the map and then drag the color gradient into the color and what this does is it take uh, the information from this and recolor it using this color gradient so what is black becomes red and what is white becomes white or this color over here so you can see how it works like this to get what we are looking for i uh, make this a uh, dark gray and the lines i will make black almost completely black like this what else? What else? Uh, yeah, the roughness of the lines are different than the roughness here on the uh, lighter, on the gray areas. So to uh, recreate that, I am going to use this texture map again and drag it into the roughness channel. And it gives us uh, the inward of what we want. Now the squares are shiny and the lines are rough and we want the opposite. So to change that and to be able to alter the uh, amount of roughness, I am going to add in a oh I am going to add in a color to number node. This allows us to uh, make some changes to uh, to this texture. To invert it, I change the output from to 1 and the output to, to 0. So now it's inverted, as you see here. And now we can use the same two sliders to adjust the value of the two grayscales to get the uh, amount of roughness that we are looking for. So let's start with the, uh, the squares. I think that... Uh, Something like this is looking good. And for the lines, something like this. Next up is uh, the subtle bump maps that we have on the lines and down here in the uh, squares. To uh, add more bump maps to this material, we have to add in a bump add node and I'll just duplicate it because I need two more uh, bump maps than we have now. So I redrag this into bump one and this other bump add node I drag into the bump number two so now we have the ability to put in two more bump maps. And let's start with the, um, the one that we want in the squares. For this I am going to use a noise texture. Let's drag it in. And 
with a very small scale, just to add some subtle surface uh, bumps, something like this. And for this, I actually want to uh, zoom into the material to uh, see the details a bit better. And I am going to use the real-time region render uh, shift command R to uh, make it rest up a bit faster. All right, so right now there's not much to see. So I think we'll have to bump up the bump height. So because this material is diffuse, it's quite hard to see the bumps, but they get through very clear on the shinier part. So maybe we have to uh, make this a bit more shiny as well to uh, show the bumps like this. I think this is great for for what we're looking for here. For the, the lines here, we are looking for something else. So let's uh, disable that for now and let's add in a spot texture and drag it into bump number two. Open up the, uh, the color information and adjust the scale to something like 0.1. Then I'm going to up the density to something like four. Yep, and uh, adjust the fall off as well, so the the edges will not be so sharp in the bump map. And I'll distort them just slightly, and turning up the level so we get a lot of uh, different sizes of these uh, these spots and add a lot of detail to the material. Let's look at how it looks. And I think it looks quite nice. So here we have the bumps going inwards instead. So we want that as well here. And I'll just uh, add in a negative uh, minus 0.1. Whoops. Like this. And, and let's keep it at that. So. I can go ahead and enable this again. And this gives us these two bump maps on the entire surface, both on the lines and inside the square. But we want to divide them. And to do that, we can use this uh, texture map we have up here and drag that down into whoops, weight number one. And if we uh, disable this for a moment, you can see what happened is that it removed this bump map from the inside of these squares, but we want the opposite. So to make up for that, I'm going to add in a color inward in between. Let's put that in there and this, and then put uh, the texture map in, into the source here. And by doing that, we get the opposite. We now have the bump map inside the, the squares and it's not present here on the lines. So let's enable this one and we want to uh, eliminate it from the inside and we can use the same map again. And this time we don't have to uh, invert it because we want it as it is. Put it into weight number two. And as you see, it's gone from in here. And now we have our material for now. I mean, it could be altered and adjusted to uh, to maybe get closer to something like this. It's a bit hard with the bump map to get it look this much raised from the surface, these lines. But I think that for if you're not in need for a very close-up shot, it's, uh, it's a great way to do it. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope you learned something. Please uh, go ahead and subscribe and like and share or whatever if you want to see more like this. Thanks.